we've got a fun um, hymn that we've been working on this semester, and it's All Creatures of Our God and King. Um, we are so thankful to have a guitar player. Singing a cappella is fun, but it is not always our favorite. And so we're so glad to have Mr. Chad with us. And in a little bit, we're going to talk about Ruby, the cow, and how she's coming along. And I've got a little story to read to you as well. And we're going to read a little bluebird story. So we're super excited. This over here where we're at is our Easter garden. Dun, dun. Um, that we, well, we worked on it this Easter. Um, but it's our prayer garden. And it's over where you guys used to build forts and stuff. So we're super excited. If you're just, just joining us, this is Mr. Chad, my husband. And he's going to play guitar. So let's all get together. And we're going to sing all creatures of our God and King. All right? Can't wait. All right? Here we go. Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam, oh praise him, oh praise him, oh Alleluia, oh Alleluia, Alleluia.
like a river again. Okay, here we go. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Thank you, Mr. Chad. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing for us. Do you mind? I'm going to have you say, say read aloud Psalm 91 while we do the motions. Does that sound right. good? You guys ready yeah. to try out our Psalm 91? It's been a while. Uh, nope. No looking on Psalm. We've got All right, here we go. Ball. Okay, here we go. We got here it right we here. Go. We've got it. Psalm 91. So everybody stand up. We're going to do the motions. Do the motions with me. Okay? All right, here we go. Psalm 91 is our, uh, our our scripture memory that we're working on. And it's such an incredible psalm, okay? And so we're gonna go all the way up to verse. Yeah, that's it, all right? So, all right, we're gonna try and do it with him. Mm -hmm. So do it real slow, because we gotta do the motions, all right? You, all right. Ready? you ready to do the motions? Get your hands out of your pocket. You ready, ready? All right, here we go. Here we go. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Almighty is like, oh, no, no, Almighty, like this, right? Okay. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress. Oh, you gotta go slower. You, can you go slower, please? I will say to the Lord, I will say <laughs> my refuge. What's refuge again? Do you remember? My refuge. And my fortress. Oh, fortress, yes. Okay. My God. My God. In whom God. I trust. In whom I trust. No, no, no. No, it's in whom trust. I trust. No, trust. It's trust is like this. We can see no. them. They would trust. Probably know. Is no, this? trust is like that. Okay, you do that and I'll do this. All right, all right. So I say, I will say to the Lord again. I will say I'll to the Lord. I'll repeat after you. Okay, that, this will work better. I will say to the Lord. I will I'll say, say to, the Lord, to the Lord. My refuge. My refuge. And my fortress. fortress. And my fortress. My God, God in, my God, God, in whom I trust, in whom I trust, for He will deliver you. For He will, will deliver, deliver you from the snare of the fowler. From the snare, from the snare of the fowler. fowler. Hey, get, yes, come on, come on. And from the deadly <laughs> pestilence. And from the deadly <laughs> pestilence. He will cover you with His pinions. He will cover you with His pinions, because pinions is feathers. And under his wings you will find refuge. And under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. His faithfulness. His faithfulness. No, his faithfulness. Oh, his faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. Right. Ching. You will not fear the terror of the night. You will not, not, fear, not fear the terror of the, the night. night. Nor the arrow that flies by day. Nor the arrow that flies by day. 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 Nor the pestilence that I... stalks in darkness. Nor the pestilence that stalks in, in the, the darkness. darkness. Nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. Nor the destruction <laughs> that wastes Waste at, at noonday. noonday. It's halfway. Straight in the middle. Uh-huh. All right. There we go. That was a little rough, but we're getting there. <laughs> it was a little rough. Yeah. I didn't work on that yeah. last yeah. week. Okay. Yeah. Please stop. Please stop. All right. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Chad, would you do us a favor? We always pray during this time. Could okay. you pray for us? Sure. All right. We're going we're gonna to pray. So everybody bow, bow your heads, and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. We thank you for providing us with all our needs, even in the middle of a pandemic. And Lord, we just
just give you praise. And God, I just thank you for each family that is represented here. And Lord, we want to come to you and just give you praise and thank you for Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, we're going to put on our full armor of God because that's extremely, extremely important before I read my story. Okay. All right. So here we go. All right. And we're going to say bye to Mr. Chad. Thanks so much for playing some guitar for us. Okay. But you're hey, welcome. you put your armor on as you're walking. Yes. He's got some work to do. He's got some fence building to do. All right. See you later, Mr. Chad. All right. Here we go. Bye. Okay. So we're going to put on our full armor of God. Are you ready? So if you're sitting down, you got to stand up for this. All right. You ready? Okay. Follow him. <laughs> but you got to really put it on. Okay. Right, here we go. So, and therefore take up your whole full armor, armor of God. God. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. You ready? Stand there for having fastened on the belt, belt of, of truth. truth. And having put on the breastplate the of righteousness. And the shoes for your feet. Having taken up the shield of... Oh, I'm sorry. Having put on the readiness given by the gospel, gospel of peace. All circumstances. Take, Take up the, the shield, shield of faith, faith, which you can extinguish the flaming darts of the evil one. Are you okay? You okay? And take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Awesome. I've got my sword, which is perfect. All right, well, I'm going to sit on over here, and Henley, if you'll just sit on over here. I'm going to sit on over here, and I'm going to read a little bit from our Bluebird book. All right? If you could hand me my Bluebird book, that would be great. Awesome. Thank you, mister. Okay. So, yeah, and you can pull up this dump if you want, or you good? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're reading the blue, from the Bluebird, the Bluebird and their Neighbors. So this story, the chapter that we're on, we've gotten pretty far along, is chapter 18. Johnny Chuck has a narrow escape. Very, very exciting. Okay, here we go. I'm going to shift over. Just a tidge. Just a tad bit. Is this the right way of shifting? I'm behind the camera. Yep, I'm going the right way. Yes, Henley wants you to know that he's behind the camera. That he is there so he can see me. I'll go over just a little bit more. Sorry, guys. It bothers me when I'm not lined up. Okay, here we go. Okay. Please, that's some, yeah, let's not tap that. Okay. Johnny Chuck poked his nose out. If you tap that, that's the microphone, so it'll, why don't you come on over here? Yeah, we, you, you, yeah, come on over here. Oh, perfect. Okay. <clears throat> Johnny Chuck poked his nose out of his friendly burrow under a large flat rock and looked around. Everything looked peaceful. He could see Aquila, the golden eagle, circling far over the black forest. At least he thought it was Aquila. As a matter of fact, it was not Aquila at all, but his cousin Baldy that Johnny Chuck saw. Baldy the eagle looks very much like Aquila. And especially from a distance. If they are close, it is easy to tell what if they are close, it is easy to tell one from the other because Aquila the golden eagle, for one thing, has feathers all the way down his legs to his toes, while Baldy the eagle's shins are bare. But of course, Johnny Chuck could not be expected to know the difference from that distance. He thought that Baldy was Aquila. Baldy lived in a nest that had built in an old dead tree that stood near the black forest on another cliff. Johnny Chuck might have known that he should not crawl out on that flat rock, even though Aquila had been hunting over the Black Forest. He should have known better, for when the laughing yellow sun smiles down on Johnny's broad back, it makes him feel just as little boys and girls feel when the Sandman calls. At first, Johnny Chuck just nodded, keeping one eye open for Aquila and, and other foes. But 
there was no use resisting the bright little sunbeams. No, sir, it was simply useless. They danced through Johnny's hair and warmed his back. And the first thing Johnny Chuck knew, they had him completely in their power. His head dropped down on his front feet and he sounded asleep. And he was sound asleep. It seems as if Johnny could have stayed awake a while after sleeping most of the winter, but not even the fear of being caught by Aquila could keep his eyes open when the bright little sunbeams were playing tag on his back. Johnny should have had Miss Chuck watch while he slept, but Miss Chuck was busy with family duties just then. She was in the friendly burrow caring for her nine tiny babies that had not yet opened their eyes. Now when Johnny Chuck was sleeping, that was just the time that Aquila the Golden Eagle was not asleep. Aquila had been watching for Johnny Chuck to come out of his friendly burrow for some time. Aquila liked to sit on a high pinnacle near his nest where he could watch every friendly burrow and crooked tail and feeding place of the wild creatures and see them when they appeared. Aquila had very sharp eyes. And Johnny Chuck had not been stretched out on that flat rock any time until Aquila had seen him. Of course, Aquila knew better than to make a dive after Johnny while he was awake, for Johnny would have tumbled into his friendly burrow and that would have been all there was to it. Then Aquila would have had to look for something else for supper for his awkward looking babies. And so Aquila waited until he saw Johnny's head drop on his front feet and then he knew that Johnny was sound asleep. Johnny had been eating many tender grass shoots and clover leaves in the green meadow near and he had grown fat and lazy. And so when Aquila saw that Johnny Chuck was asleep, he lost no time waiting for him to awaken. Down through the air shot Aquila on his strong wings like an arrow falling from the sky. And there was Johnny Chuck dreaming of the time when his babies would be large enough to play around the friendly burrow like brown balls rolling around. Nearer and nearer came Aquila and still Johnny Chuck slept. Molly Cottontail had been resting in the shade of a leafy bush and she saw Aquila making straight for Johnny Chuck. Molly thumped a warning as loud as she could and then hurried to her own friendly burrow. But Johnny Chuck was sleeping too soundly to hear. Not far from Johnny's home was an old friendly burrow that had been his home before he moved farther up the side of the high cliff. Of course, Johnny Chuck seldom used the old friendly burrow anymore unless he needed a place to run into it, in, uh, run into in a hurry. And so Spot the skunk had bar, 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 borrowed it for a few days until he could make up his mind where he wanted to spend the summer. It happened that about the time Aquila stared, started for Johnny Chuck, Spot the Skunk had decided it was time to start out for an evening stroll. It was a little early, but Spot the Skunk was hungry, for he had done considerable walking the night before while he was looking for a summer home. He had done so much walking that he had not taken much time to find something to eat, and so he was starting out a little earlier than usual. Spot the Skunk could not see very well after coming out of the darkness in the friendly burrow, but he could see well enough to know that danger was near. He was almost passing the home of Johnny Chuck when Aquila swooped down with his sharp claws, intending to fasten him in the broad back of Johnny Chuck and carry him away. Of course, Spot the Skunk thought that Aquila was after him, and so he tried to defend himself the best way he knew how. Oh. You see, Spot the Skunk is a little cousin of Mephitis the Skunk. He carries a very powerful gun that shoots a spray of yellow liquid that blinds the eyes of everyone that gets in its way, and so does Mephitis the skunk. Spot does not use his gun unless he is sorely pressed. But when Aquila the golden eagle dived past him after Johnny Chuck Spot raised his tail over his back and sprayed Aquila full in the face. That was too much for Aquila. For a moment he could scarcely see and he almost missed Johnny Chuck entirely. At, as it was, one of his sharp claws cut a deep gash at Johnny's back and carried him off the rock before he could shake loose. When Johnny looked up, there was Spot the Skunk still standing with his tail over his back. Poor Johnny Chuck. That's sad. Mama, read it. 
Okay, well. Read the next chapter. You've been reading several chapters. Next week, next week, we're going to look at, Henley really wants me to read another chapter, but I've got another book to read that I'm really excited about reading, so we'll have to wait. But next week, which we're going to continue this beginning next week, on Tuesday mornings and Wednesday mornings for one hour, we'll have a Cedar House Live, and there'll be exciting things happening. We're going to shoot from 10 to 11 on Tuesday mornings and Wednesday mornings. So, you guys, I hope y'all can join us. Um, but chapter 19 is next week. Spot the Skunk Finds a Home. Sure, I'm glad Spot the, uh, Spot the Skunk was there for Johnny Chuck. And I'm sad he got clawed. Okay, so let me dog ear this page. I have one more story before we get up and we go see how Ruby is doing. Ruby is our cow, and she's due any day now and I'm gonna show you some exciting things. Henley just moved my book. He's playing some live video tricks on me. <laughs> Alright, so I believe I've learned how to turn the book backwards so you can see the pictures. I mean not the book but turn your feed backwards so that you can see the pictures as I read to you. I'm super excited. This is a story called Henry the Impatient Heron. Henry the Impatient Heron. And I'm reading this story to you guys because I wanted to tell you on our pond where you guys have come and played very often, not the frog pond, but the pond where the animals live, I have seen a blue heron many times. Do you know what I do sometimes in the morning? I will go and check on Ruby our cow because we're checking her every couple of hours right now. And um, before anybody is down here at the pond and it's quiet, I'll go and I'll just see who might be hanging out, of our, out, out, at, out at our pond because the blue heron doesn't like you to be near. He doesn't mind the animals, but, um, but he'll be there and drinking from the pond and possibly eating some fish, I'm not certain. And then a couple of times, remember the geese that were here? They've come back several times and they've swam in our pond. And I'm super excited about that. And just the other day, you know what I saw? A roadrunner in our pasture. A roadrunner! So cool. So, if you guys remember that if you go outside and you're kind of still and quiet and don't make a lot of noise and you just sit and observe and check out the things that are happening, the things that God has created in nature, do you know that you will see some amazing things every once in a while, okay? Maybe more often than you realize, okay? So sometimes it's fun to play and be rowdy outside, but sometimes take a little break and stop and listen and be quiet and still. Henry the Impatient Heron. Now, this looks like a white heron when I look in the book, but it we see a blue heron on our pond. No, that's a white, that's a blue heron. Oh my look, it has no. Oh, okay. Gray. All right, we'll see. We'll we'll see what the book says. So here we go. I feel like we're in some. I'm gonna play around with this. I think if we turn this way. Okay. I'm gonna shift our table just a tidge. Can you hold this? Just make sure it didn't fall. Oops. All right. There. I think you can see the book a little bit better. All right. Here we go. All right. Henry was a young heron, a great blue heron. Oh, it is a blue one. A great blue heron that lived near a pond. His long, thin legs were great for wading and his long pointed bill was great for catching fish. But the young heron had a problem. He couldn't stand still. Other herons stood still for hours. Legs stiff, bodies rigid, necks poised to strike out at a fish or salamander or tasty frog that might swim by. They stood still so long that the fish and the salamanders and the frogs forgot the herons were there. But the young heron was impatient and had been that way since he hatched. The other chicks in the rookery waited 
patiently in their nest high in the tree for mom or dad to return with food. Henry hopped and squawked about, too anxious to stand still. His brothers and sisters said, stand still, you're stepping on our heads. But he couldn't. When Henry's mother or father returned, he hopped about some more. Stand still, his parents pleaded with but he just couldn't. Finally, when he was so hungry, he couldn't hardly stand it, he got a little bit to eat. I'm trying to hold it where y'all can see it. We're still in this weird... There. It's not that he didn't try. Many times he practiced, perched on the side of his nest, but soon his legs would begin to twitch and his neck would begin to itch. Then he'd raise his long leg to scratch his back or flap his wings to stretch in his nest. It didn't matter. His mother and father brought food, but soon he would be on his own. Soon he would have to feed himself. When it was time to fly, the young heron liked the way the wind felt beneath his wings. He wasn't afraid. He had always lived high in a tree with all his hopping and flapping. His large wings and had grown strong. At the pond, his brother and sister stayed near his mother. He watched a mallard family parade by. A doe and her fawn walked to the lake shore to take a drink. Then he spied a dragonfly and followed it through the cattails to a red-winged blackbird's nest. There was so much to see and do at the pond that Henry forgot about his family until his tummy began to grumble and rumble. He looked for his mother, his sister, and his brother, but they were nowhere to be found. That's when he knew he was alone and would have to feed himself. I can do this, he thought. After all, how hard can it be to catch a fish? He waded in the water and looked and looked. His gray head darted this way and that and watching below for a shiny fish to bolt between his skinny legs, but none did. His twisting neck and bobbing head frightened the fish away. On the shore, the little heron spotted a salamander. Oh, what a tasty treat. He could move fast when he wanted to. He ran towards the salamander with great speed, but the salamander saw him and quickly darted away. His bill hit the bank where the salamander had been and all he got was a mouthful of sand. Yuck. I'm so hungry, thought the impatient heron. I'll eat the next thing that moves. Then he spied a plump little frog sitting on a lily pad nearby. Just the thing. Henry thought, and he took a great big leap. The frog jumped away just in time. Henry followed his long legs running, wings flapping, but the frog jumped again. Henry ran smack into a log and fell backwards in the water. Gird plash! Looking up to see what he hit, the little heron saw it wasn't a log at all. It was a heron, and not just any heron, it was the great blue heron, the heron of all herons. Oh, pardon me, sir, I thought you were a log, the little heron said with a bow. You are quite excused, said the great blue heron with a, a kingly, kingly voice. After all, all, after all, I am the king of camouflage. The king of camouflage? The young heron asked. Oh yes, said the king. I can stand still so long that even I think I have turned into a log. Which it's very true. This is very true. It is difficult to recognize a heron when they are super still near the trees at our pond. The impatient heron hung his head and said, I wish I could stand still. I'm so hungry I could eat a log. The great blue heron chuckled and shook his head. <laughs> you know, he told the young heron, when I was little, I couldn't stand still either. Then I learned the trick. Henry peeked up hopefully and asked, what do you do? With a knowing look, the great blue heron said, the trick is to look like a stick. Look like a stick, the young heron asked.
Yes, said the king. A fish is afraid of a heron, but not afraid of a stick. When you stand very still, the fish will think your legs are sticks. Oh. And then Henry asked, may I use your trick? Be my guest, said the king of the flu, said the king, and off he flew with a kick and a swish. The sun was beginning to set in the sky, but the impatient heron knew he had to try. He found an inlet that looked like a good place to catch a frog, salamander, or fish. Then he stood still and thought and thought, I must think like a fish. I must look like a stick. His legs grew tired, his feet got cold, and yet he stood quite still. Just as the last of the light of day sank beneath the hill, a fish swam away. Without baiting, batting an eye, Henry's neck darted forward with strength, all its own. When he lifted his head, a large fish squirmed in its bill. I caught one, he thought, and then he swallowed the fish. Suddenly, his stomach was quiet and full. So he flew to a perch and preened and preened, very proud of himself. When he grew tired, he put his head under a wing and happily went to sleep. The impatient heron had learned to stand still. Okay, great blue heron facts. We're gonna talk about this for just a second. A great blue heron's eyes are positioned on its head so it can see behind as well as from the front. A heron can focus its eyes very fast so it can search for fish at close range, then quickly switch to a long distance to view, to watch for predators. Did you know this? Okay. When flying, herons' long necks are S-shaped. That's very interesting, but I can see that they have very, very long necks. Herons' long necks and pointy beaks allow them to quickly spear fish or other small animals. They can fly 20 to 30 miles an hour. Whoa! Next time you're in a car, ask the driver to tell you when you're driving as fast as a heron flies. So if you live here in Greenville, if you're driving on Wesley Street, sometimes people drive 40, but it, it's, a little, it's a little slower than when you're driving on Wesley Street or Sale Street. The heron's backward facing knee is really its ankle and heel. Its real knee is inside its body cavity, hidden inside its skin and under its feathers. How fascinating. When a great blue heron preens, it uses its toes to scratch a patch of powder down, a type of feather that helps insulate a bird, keeping them warm. The tips of these feathers disintegrate into a powdery substance that um, scientists who study birds, can't pronounce that, think may soak up water and be used to preen and clean feathers. When clean, it uses a comb on its middle front toe to straighten its feathers. Great blue herons are large birds. When they stand, they are approximately, <gasps> are you ready for this? They're approximately four, four feet tall, four feet tall. How tall are you? I'm about four foot. Yeah, oh goodness, he is getting close to four foot. The wings span from the tip of one wing to the other wing, whenever they flap them out, like they're flying, is about six feet, which if any of y'all know Miss Megan, who's our science teacher here at the Cedar House, she has the largest wingspan I've ever, ever seen. We actually went to a trail and they had a measurement where you stick your arms out for your wingspan and hers is pretty pretty wide maybe like a blue heron I don't know so y'all should measure your wingspan and Mama, then Uncle measure Brandon's six feet wingspan is longer than Miss Megan's. Mm, I don't know we'll see yeah okay um herons are a type of bird all birds have feathers although not all birds fly what bird doesn't fly Henley chickens and well, penguins Penguins. Penguins was one I was. Um, chickens do not fly. Actually, and f they they can flutter. They glide. Oh, okay. In fact, birds are the only animals that have feathers. Birds hatch from eggs, breathe air, and are warm-blooded. 
All right, adult great blue herons only weigh about five pounds. For four feet? How much do you weigh? I won't tell you how much Miss Samantha weighs. Their very long legs help them to walk quietly through the shallow water. They are very sneaky birds. I, I, I will attest to that. The heron has a tiny bit of webbing between two of its front toes so it won't sink into marshy ground because I, they're always near a pond. They, uh, we read that. Um, okay. All right. So there is some fun facts about blue herons. Okay. Now, oh, do you also know the heron life cycle? Herons breed in large groups called colonies. They call them colonies. They usually build big nests high in trees or on cliff edge, close to water. The male gathers sticks and the female builds the nest. At 10 to 12 weeks, the chicks Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The eggs hatch after 26 to, oh, A. Chicks live in the nest for about, well, okay, oh. yes. The eggs hatch after 26 to 30 days. Oh. Chicks live in the nest for about two months and both parents feed them. That's when they take their first flight. Females lay between two and seven pale blue eggs. Both parents take turns sitting on the eggs to keep them warm. Okay. At 10 to 12 weeks, the chicks leave the nest and their parents for, for, for good. So that's some little facts about a blue heron. Now I'm gonna take you over here oh. to see Ruby. Ruby. to see our sweet Ruby. Okay, she's been sitting right here by us because she was trying to knock over. We've put her in this pasture where we are, where y'all play normally because there's lots of feed, uh, lots of grass over here and we didn't want to mow because that's their food. The grass is the, the animal's food. So what we decided to do was put them over here. We built some fences. And so they're over here in this pasture where y'all normally play at the cedar house. But over here, while we've been reading and singing, little Miss Ruby has been hanging out with us. There she is. There's Miss Ruby. Y'all say hi to Ruby. Say, hey, what's going on? She's resting right now. Okay. She's resting and hanging out. She's super sweet. I'm gonna see if I can sit this camera in the grass so that I can go over there and show y'all some things. Actually, no, I'm just gonna walk over. So I wanna show y'all some things. So Ruby is due any day now. She might stand up for us, which would be okay. She's due any day now. And she's resting a lot, eating a lot, hanging out a lot. If you look, Faith said hi to Ruby. Ruby, um, Ruby says hi back. Hi, Faith. All right, so here she is, and she's super, super, super duper sweet. Um, hey, Henley, will you go get Daddy and see if you'll hold this camera for me real fast? Because I'm gonna. I'll hold it for you. I'll no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Go get Daddy for me. Just run real fast. Go get Daddy. Okay. Anyway, so here's Ruby, and this is her little siesta time. And a couple of times this week I've thought, oh, she's about to give birth. But then I've watched some more things and there's some really things that we're looking for and we're watching. And she's laying down right now, so it's going to be kind of hard for me to show you every single thing. But right over here, right over here is little Miss Ruby. And so this back part, and this might be kind of gross for some of you, but this is just farm anatomy. <laughs> So back here is the back of the cow, which it's called the